My name's David Zimmel. I'm the host of uh, Shades of Havana. We're here at Joe's Cigars in Spring Lake on uh, Route 71. Um, I'm thrilled to have a tremendous panel here. Uh, we have uh, two cigar shop owners, which uh, is a first for Shades of Havana. So we should uh, get some great information. And we have a return guest, Mike Al. <laughs> uh, so um, I am smoking a Leaf Cigar. Um, Joe turned me on to this first time. Uh, and I got to tell you, it's really a fantastic smoke. Uh, really enjoying it. So why don't we uh, go to our guests? Why don't you introduce yourself? Let us know what you're smoking, what you're drinking along with the uh, cigar. Okay. Mike Al. My name is Mike Al. <laughs> you already know what that is. Some respect on. Yeah. Put some Hell respect yeah. on my name. <laughs> I'm smoking a tabac uh, con leche. Uh, a little chocolate flavor cigar, you know, just a, a regular mild cigar. Um, I'm retired from Neptune Police Department, 2016. Um, um, I'm in real estate. I'm a builder. Uh, I do renovations. I'm a landlord. Everything under the sun. And I'm drinking uh, some Blantons with this cigar. I'm Joe Scafidi. I own Joe Cigars. I am smoking a Davidoff Special R. Uh, one of my favorite cigars, a little milder than what I normally smoke, but this cigar is definitely spectacular. And I'm pairing with, believe it or not, a little Diet Coke. Perfect. Something a little sweet. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you, Joe, for having us today and letting <laughs> us in your lounge disrupt commerce a little bit. That's all right. Uh, I'm Nick Foster, uh, own Senior Juan Cigars in Belmar, up the road here from Joe, and uh, half uh, co owner of uh, Asbury Park Cigar in Asbury Park, uh, smoking a Compagnon uh, from Warp Cigars, a new one they have out. Uh, Warped is a boutique brand uh, owned by Kyle Gillis. Uh, he previously rolled most of his stuff at El Teton de Bronze in Miami. Uh, now he's switched up rollers and factories and has put out some new stuff as well. So just trying this one here today. So thank you guys for joining us. So since we have uh, two mavens on the panel, <laughs> uh, why don't we uh, talk a bit, little bit about cigars? You know, maybe tell us a little bit about what your experience was during COVID. Uh, you know, with, with the clientele and, and, you know, what people like, you know, what their favorite cigars are. Yeah. Take it away. Go for it, Nick. Yeah, what do you think? Well, I mean, I saw a <laughs> definite uptick over COVID. You know, I was talking to Joe about it earlier. Um, you know, a lot of people came out of the woodwork, especially in, in the town that I'm in, in Belmar. A lot of people have moved down from up north, moved out of the city. And a lot of people have rediscovered cigars. A lot more time working from home. Um, you know, instead of buying two or three cigars, guys are buying a box uh, or gals are buying a box. You know, sitting in the backyard, really kind of getting that man shed going. You know, I know Mike Al's got a nice uh, man shed uh, for smoking cigars. So a lot of people have done that uh, and definitely saw that uptick over COVID. Uh, didn't really hurt us at all. Uh, my Asbury store did have to be closed. Uh, Asbury Park Police were making sure that the stores were closed and abiding by COVID rules. Belmar, a little bit more free form. Uh, so we did see a little uptick and we, we gained some new customers over COVID. COVID was tough for me because my basic business model is based on my, uh, my membership. I charge a monthly uh, membership rate and, and I had to have this room closed. So I couldn't charge. Like, like the white guys were like, ah, just charge me, charge me, charge me. I'm like, that's not the way I do things. If I don't eat in, I, I can't charge it, you know? So I went eight months without it. But, I mean, I sold more cigars during that little stretch. It was crazy. It, you know, these guys were not going to let these cigar shops close. Yeah, I, I have to tell you that this is, um, you know, I wish I lived a little closer. I'm going to try and get down here a little more often, but um, it's a wonderful room. Very homey. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like a perfect cigar room with the TVs up here, so I'm sure that the guys that are members here really uh, enjoy yeah. themselves. I have 58 members and 40 have been here for over three years. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's, nice. that's pretty good testament to what we got going on here. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've all become friends. Like they all, now they vacation together, they go to dinner together, and their wives are friends. It's really turned into a really good thing. So Nick, I'm just curious, do you, do you have any lockers at your place? We yeah, we have 22 lockers. You do? Uh, we only have two of them that are open right now. Uh, so it's not a membership. We have a little bit smaller store, grab and go. Our model's a little different. Uh, so we're more grab and go, summer crowd. Um, we see a lot of surge in that. Uh, but if you do get a locker from us, it's 500 bucks for the year. You get the locker, you get all the money back in store credit and 20% off everything in the store. So, And the guys that typically get the lockers are guys that come quite often. Yeah, they keep a bottle in there, you know, bring their friends, that kind of thing. You know, it's funny because um, 
the place that I go uh, doesn't have lockers. And I always wondered, you know, um, I guess the lockers can almost pay the rent. Almost. Mine does because I yeah. pay, because what I do is I charge monthly. Right. So on the first of every month, I get 58 times 125 a month. So I'm good. Like, so if somebody comes in the store that is not a member, are they allowed back here? No. So you have to be a member. Have to be a member or a guest to come back. And what about at your place? No, I mean, if you buy a cigar, you can sit in the lounge. A lot, obviously not as not this big. Not this big. Um, so, you know, you know, like I said, we're more focused on the retail grab-and-go customer. If you're not a member, you can still smoke here. I mean, I, I have the Right, you have the front. front section. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, you know, it's funny because over the years, I find that hanging out at a cigar lounge, it's the greatest thing in the world. I mean, it's, uh, I find after a long day of work, uh, stopping by, hanging out, having a cigar, literally, totally relaxes me. Uh, it, it, it's, it's wonderful. And like you said, you meet a lot of great guys. Mm -hmm. I mean... It, it's almost like a brotherhood, yeah. so to speak, uh, yeah. you know, hanging out in a cigar place. So, uh, you know, it's funny. I have a friend of mine that um, was a member of a club uh, in, in Philly. Um, I forget the name of it off the top of my head. But um, unfortunately, this guy ended up getting uh, pancreatic cancer and he, and he died. But mm -hmm. it was unbelievable. At his funeral, there were like 50 guys showed up, mm -hmm. all from the cigar, cigar guys. Place. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. they were telling stories yeah. about, you know, hanging out and stories mm -hmm. about, you know, hanging out with him. And it was really unbelievable. It was, it was, it was fantastic. Yeah. You know, it was really great. So do you guys sell, uh, do you find that most of your business is people coming in, buying from the humidor, or do you do any online business uh, where people can go online and you ship out? My guys all come in. Um, it's hard to compete online because we in New Jersey have a 30% tobacco tax where Pennsylvania is zero, Florida is zero. So it's much easier to ship from there and avoid that tax. Like I can't compete. Like something that I would sell for $130, they can sell for 100. So nobody's gonna buy that from me online. Mm -hmm. But they'll come in here, go through and buy three, five, two, seven, you know, whatever it is, and out they go. Cause they, they know exactly what they're getting. You know, it's funny you say that because I um, uh, smoked a cigar that I ordered online once, and I got the, when the, the number came up, I looked at it, I said, geez, this is crazy. It's so much cheaper. Yeah. And I realized it was all the tax. Mm -hmm. It was all the tax. Yeah. I mean, for the, for the same reasons, we don't ship out any production cigars. We do ship out our hand-rolled cigars. Yeah, my house cigars, I ship those. Yeah, we ship those out. So we do have an online site for those, but there's no way we can compete with the JRs, the Holtz, no. the, you know, there's no way to compete. So the, the, your house cigar, is that hand, that's not hand-rolled here, though? Nope. It's actually manufactured by Alec Bradley. Um, I came up to blend about four and a half years ago, and I had to buy 20,000 labels. Wow. And I'm like, man, I hope I'm in business when 20,000 <laughs> run out. Yeah. yeah. About okay. eight months ago, we ran out of those 20,000 labels, so and we had to do another 20,000. That made me feel really good. That made me feel really good. That's the only way to really count that cigar. Yeah. How many labels, labels run out? Yeah. 20,000 labels are gone God. in four years. That's yeah. all I care. <laughs> yeah. that, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Now, what are your, typically, what are your hours? I open every morning at 10 o'clock, um, 10 to 10 during the week, uh, Saturdays 10 to 9, Sundays 10 to 8, but it's the fifth inning of a Yankee game on a Tuesday night. I'm not throwing anybody out at 10 o'clock. You know what I mean? We're staying. Good. So we're are staying you here day. every day? Uh, seven days a week. I never wow. miss a day, ever. And some places do <laughs> throw guys out. Yes. So, yeah. so, yeah. Not, yeah. not here, <laughs> but some places do. Yeah. Not here. Yeah. I, I hate to say it, but yeah. the place I go to, I'm not going to use the name right yeah. now, yeah. but they close now, since COVID, mm -hmm. they close at 6. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It's, it's I'd go out of business doing it that way. It's you can't terrible. do it that way. No, during can't football that way. season, you can't do oh that. God, yeah. Well, no. they're, they're open on Saturday no. to 6, but even like on Monday night, you know, you go to work, you want to go hang out, have a mm. couple cigars, watch the game, and, and what they do is at 6 o'clock, they come around, and they're, you're out. Yeah. Yeah. There's no I hanging know. out. Yeah, yeah. there's there's places like around here that do that, and yeah. uh, you know there's places I've never been to on a weekday because uh, when I was working in Manhattan, you know, I never got home in time to go to those places. You know, yeah. so yeah, and you I, know, and like I go uh, at the you know, you get back too late. I got back too late. They're closed. You know, yeah. they're not open when I'm leaving for work, and they're closed by the time I get home. So, so yeah, the outside looking in. Now, do you ever have any card games here? No, 
No car game. You know what? No, sir. My guys all like each other. Right. <laughs> I, all you need is two millionaires fighting over a $20 pot. Yeah. Dividing my room. Yep. Yeah. You want to gamble? There's so many ways to gamble in New Jersey right yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. You want to play cards? You got, go you there. know, whatever it yeah. is. Go there. Poker stars or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you want to bet games? I mean, start at the beginning. Bet MGM. Yeah. Draft Kings. You know, it's Bandle. interesting. So you bring up the gambling. You know, what? how do you feel about the gambling? I, I'm not sure. You know, it's funny. I... I was watching a Nick game the other night, and I guess the game was on two stations. One station was the game, and the other station, they had, you know, live betting during yeah, the, the game. candle station. Yeah, and yeah. they had guys <laughs> talking, you know, and, and, and I said to myself, you know, it's like, I don't know, to me, it just seemed like it was a little carried away. I love the online gambling. Um, I've gambled my whole life. Uh, I think this is a safer way to gamble. When you gamble with a bookmaker, you get credit. And if you don't pay him, then you have to pay him. You know what I mean? If you don't have the money, you still got to pay him. Yeah. Where here, you could only lose what you put in. What you put in. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So you put $100 in, you lose that $100. You can't bet dollar one one because it's not in there. They don't want to hear it. So to me, I, I think, I, I think the, organi the organization of the gambling is fine. I, I think it's great. And do you think that there's any danger in uh – that the betting has become so large that it could have an effect on games? You know, that's always the problem. That's always the question because, uh, like, if you're in New Jersey, you can't bet New Jersey college sports. Like, you can't bet Seton Hall. You can't bet Rutgers. Can't, St. Peter's just made that oh, I didn't, unbelievable I didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't know that. Is that? Yep. yep. So if you're yeah. in Jersey, you, you can't, can't bet, bet on, a, right. on a New Jersey game. So St. Peter's made wow. that unbelievable run, and if you live in New Jersey and you want to gamble in New Jersey, you couldn't bet honor against St. Peter's. Yeah, nope. Couldn't. Mm -hmm. that, and, that, and that's a law. Well, first of all, you had to be nuts if you were going to pick St. Peter's. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. That's my guy, Shaheen Holloway. Oh, yeah. man. That's a Seton Hall yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> is that where you went? Did you go to see yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. He is. So I know, I, um, I know somebody that knows somebody that bet uh, the two NFC, AFC playoff games. Okay. They bet $25. They picked the score, the exact score. Oh, I saw game. that. They won exactly. five hundred and seventy-five thousand yeah. dollars for like nothing for like thirty yeah. bucks or yeah, something. It like yeah, like twenty-five bucks. <laughs> yeah. It was really crazy. Oh my god. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. The gambling thing is, uh, listen. I guess it brings in some money for the state. Yeah. So oh, yeah. it, it, time. It, it's it's not a, it's not a yeah. bad thing. Well, not a bad thing. You, you got to be careful what you do in a cigar room. Um, you know, I always get a little jealous when I look at other states and they can have a liquor license, and they can have a full bar, and they can serve food. Um, I have no idea. Make our I, business a lot easier. Yeah, it would make our business a lot easier. Like I was talking to a guy from Pennsylvania who had three cigar shops. He sold one, got a liquor license for the other two, and he said, "I don't have any dead hours anymore." He goes, "I, you know, if the, if people are there and they're not buying cigars, they're buying booze. If they're not buying booze, they're buying cigars." He goes, right. he goes "All my all my hours are full. My staff goes home happy. They get tipped, and that's it. Every day's good. You know, but in New Jersey, you can't have that much fun in one room." It's just the way the law is. So, but is it's legal to bring your own? Uh... You can be YOB, but still, I mean, you're not getting the benefit of us, you know, yeah. being able to stock a bar, being able to put some bourbon up there, being have some yeah. some bartenders, and getting that extra revenue. Um, so it makes our business model a little harder. You know, so it's interesting. There's a there's a cigar place that just opened up, that they have a, a deal whereby if you get a locker, mm -hmm. they give you a card key to get into the place 24 mm -hmm. yeah. seven. And they have cameras up. Yep. And, you know, so if you go in there at 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, there's a camera. You can't do anything, you yeah. know. But it, it's pretty interesting that, you know, first of all, I don't know who's going out at 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. There's only trouble with that. I almost did that when I first opened because of my membership. And I saw what the expense would be with the insurance. insurance. Oh, right? is that another right? Level. Yeah. 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 Another level. Another level. Insurance, yeah. Like, I charge a buck and a quarter a month for my membership. I would have to charge a minimum of 200 just and not make any more money. Yeah. Yeah. It would all be, that would all go to the insurance. Yeah. <laughs> and forget the insurance, yeah. just the well-being of going home, be able to go to sleep, and yeah. nobody's in your store. Yeah. yeah. You know. right. I didn't even yeah, really you, think you, of it. You want to have that control of your store, too. Yeah. Because you, you don't, people do get out of control yeah. in the store. They well, no, this their, place, this, you their... can't get into the store part. Okay. So, in other words, you have a locker. Yeah. You're a member. And you have the ability to come in the back door. Mm -hmm. Okay, the front door is closed, so mm -hmm. no one can go up and start taking cigars. Yeah, you know, the, but the liability—the last thing you want is some guy 
yeah. having a heart attack in there. Oh, some yeah. guy bringing somebody in who's not Probably as he's drunk and burns the place down. <laughs> burns it down. Not his, not his, not his <laughs> wife. Yeah. Nothing Can good happens. Nothing good happens. Nothing, nothing good happens at 3 a.m. Okay, okay well, we'll be back here. Yeah, right. Still, even if you're a member, <laughs> who knows? I mean, yeah. Members do get out of control. Yeah. yeah. Everybody gets out of control. Well, we were, we were talking about that earlier, you know. Start drinking and all right. of a sudden it gets all nice. hell breaks loose. Right. Like, you always want to be there, be like, Okay, buddy, you got to relax, and it's time for you to go. <laughs> yeah, you got to you got to kind of moderate. Sometimes you got to moderate the room, right? Yeah. When guys get a little crazy, yeah. um, or guys start to disagree, yeah. you got to kind of step in and be like, "Hey, Ooh. we're all just here to have relax and yeah, drink, relax. drink a little, and smoke." We're trying a cigar. to get away Stop from and throw a couple cigars. Then everybody, calm down. Yeah, everybody have a cigar. <laughs> hey, we're trying to get away from the girls and 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 and, yeah. and the wives and stuff just to relax. That's it. Yeah. And, and just out of curiosity, how? Um, how important is it to maintain the proper ventilation? Do you guys spend a lot of time and money on, on doing that? I am like crazy about it. Like I make sure I do it. I actually, the one right above your head here was an afterthought. And I have one in front, one in the back. Like right now, my, this is 20 by 100, so it's 2,000 square feet. I got 8,000 square feet of ventilation in here. Wow. And that's supposed to be cleaned every month. I do it every two weeks. The other one's supposed to be the, the uh, filter supposed to change every six or every year. I change them every six months. Mm -hmm. like, I'm always one ahead of it. Like you just got to stay ahead of it. Yeah. Because you don't want to buy. You know. You know this. You, you can't get your. You need your neighbors on your side. Yeah. Right. Plus, you don't <laughs> yeah. want to come into the room and have tw 15 guys. Yeah. Right? You need your neighbors yeah. on you your can't side. The you, can't have your yeah. you can't have your neighbors. You know. Right. Not work. That, that doesn't. Yeah. Work. It's, um, and we run into those problems too. You know. Yeah, yeah, I've got the ra I get the rabbit airs. I've yeah. got an exhaust fan. Yeah. Exactly. And Asbury. We've got a quote out to put in a new system over there to it enlarge it. You got to over. You got to really got to overbuild your ventilation system right. for the space to handle you the smoke. To. Even the guys that come inside the building they'll complain about oh man it's so you know you go to different cigar bars yeah. everybody complains about oh man it's so smoky in there right it's not like it's like oh i'm choking in there yeah. coughing and all types of stuff and you, you know that's problematic for a lot of guys when they come in they, they always complain about yeah. that they don't complain about anything else yeah but right. the but smokiness smoking and your yeah. your clothes when you get home yeah, well th yeah. they got a system you know that has little holes in the floor and matching holes in the ceiling starts at like a hundred grand and each hole corresponds and the air flows constantly yeah, so good. if we all had, if we all had 100 g's yeah, we'd put we'd, worth, right. we'd, we'd put that in but you know that's the government cost right you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so so you gotta you gotta kind of like you gotta manage it you gotta yeah. find you gotta find the solution that works for your space right. within your budget you know or else you're gonna smoke out everybody yeah all right, so uh, my name's David Zimmel. I'm the host of uh, Shades of Havana. Um, we're um, here with uh, Nick, Joe, Mike, Al. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back in a couple minutes. In 1993, John Gwaltney dubbed himself Senior Juan and founded Senior Juan Cigars. John prided himself on offering up equal helpings of quick wit, hot coffee, and fine premium cigars in no particular order. His zeal for storytelling and creating a great atmosphere to enjoy a cigar drew in fans and customers. Today, we are proud to build upon the foundations of what John created in order to make your cigar smoking experience even better. The best selection of premium cigar brands, the finest accessories, and Senior Juan's famous hand-rolled cigars, all while making sure we never lose sight of keeping the shop a friendly, relaxing spot to enjoy a smoke. In this new day and age of online meetings and presentations, you need the best team at the ready. Whether broadcasting your Zoom meetings to Facebook Live or live streaming a fundraiser event, Surreal Streaming Services, with over 10 years of experience, can add confidence to your next live stream event. Call or text 646-498-8888 or visit sur-real.com. MRD Productions is a full-service digital media company dedicated to creating and producing content with purpose. If you or your company are looking to create a video or commercial that pops, produce a show or podcast of your own, call 718-216-6403 or email info at mrdproductionsllc.com. At MRD Productions, we tell stories. So I want to thank you guys again for uh, joining me at Joe's Cigars. Mike Al, um, this is your first uh, uh, time doing this. Uh, you, you enjoying yourself? 
I'm having fun, man. I, you know, I like cigar shops. I mean, it's a different, you know, you get to meet a lot of different people, have a, a lot of different trades. So you might need a guy who does some roofing, some, you know, home renovation, some plumbing, some heating, some air, everything. And, you, you know, you can build relationships on that alone and be like, oh, let me use my man. He's here and, you know, he does a good job on stuff. And, you know, I've been in a cigar shop where a guy helped with the ventilation system. And I'm like, wow. I said, okay. I said, that's, that's, that, that's what's up. Yeah. You know, you, you want to build those relationships where home renovations, you know, you're looking to do something at your house and a guy is right over there and you'll be like, oh, okay. Could you come over and give me, and you know, give you a good price because it's like a brotherhood when you, yeah. you know, when you're in a cigar shop. You know? So do we want to break Mike's balls on what he's smoking? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. And, and you know what? <laughs> I've, I've looked on what I liked a lot of cigars, and I'm a Nicaraguan rapper guy. Okay. I didn't even know that. But you, I just you, looked you, at all my favorite that. cigars. Yeah. This is, you know, I do my tabac <laughs> yeah. con leche or whatever like that. Yeah. This is a nice flavored cigar. But I like Don Pepin. Right. I like Aging right. Room. So you redeem like, yourself. Well, you know, right. yeah. like, he's hey, back though. Hey, 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 you know, yeah. And I'm like that. You know, <laughs> oh, I, hey, it's not just that. I mean, you know, I, I, I smoke a lot of different yeah. other cigars. My father's cigars. Yeah. Hey, and it's okay. Yeah. You don't justify that. Yeah, 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 we're okay. Yeah. Well, listen, it's, we can just wrote. We can just replace that with a Tootsie Roll pop. We are laughing at you with the back. We are laughing at you. Like, hey, look, I got the. The and Florida Lawson Tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah that's, that's a real cigar. And that's a real cigar. And, and, and listen, that's I'm going to be cigar. honest with you. This is my favorite cigar. All right. All right. This is my favorite right here. Cigar you know, my father's Mike, cigar. So I know. Yeah. A, and you know what? I didn't realize, but I smoke the former um, cigars of the year. Yeah. That's one of them. I that's one of them. I didn't yeah. know it. And, and this is the, the tobacco is a. Uh, a uh, cigar of the year. No, too. it wasn't. No, <laughs> it wasn't. No, no, no. It wasn't. not flavored. <laughs> no, no, not flavored. So I always hold well, on. No, no. Flavored cigar of the year. Oh, baby. Fla See, that's what y'all uh, don't. I don't get flavored cigar of the year. I don't get flavored. Even get I don't get flavored cigar magazine, so I don't know. That. You I don't don't know, know that. Flavored cigar of the year. If you look this up, <laughs> almost has five stars. So y'all better look that almost. up. All right, almost, almost. You know what? Nobody, nobody carries this either. I carry. I well, you do. Yes. I, you do. So. I carry but, but a lot of I won't people, smoke it, but I carry a, it. A lot of people <laughs> don't, but, but I'm going to tell you this. Out of all cigars out there, yeah. you can't get this one. Well, I know. I'm, this I know. one is hard to get. Yeah. Yeah. Even on, to get. <laughs> and I'm an online guy. Yeah. Even online, you can't get these. Flavors are hard right now They're after COVID, hard. right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we roll our own flavors. Our flavor company went out of business, had to find a new flavor company. Yeah. Um, but I always laugh about flavors, and I know we're busting your chops a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I use, always use that opportunity to be like, hey, what do you like about that? Yeah. Here's something without the flavor. So one of the crazy experiences, I went to CLE Cigars in Don Lee, Honduras, mm -hmm. right? Went down there, saw him roll everything. And Christian Aroa from Aroa Cigars, Asylum Cigars, and his, his dad does Aladino Cigars. Uh, he's like, hey, try this cigar. What do you think? It's a Maduro. I said, this is great. He goes, all right, this is my flavored cigar that I make, just without the flavoring. He's like, this is the Maduro before I had the flavoring. I'm like, this is a good cigar. And he's like, yeah. He's like, would you smoke the flavor? I said, I don't know. I don't smoke flavors. He's like, but this is how we get people into it. Yeah. So I find that a lot of people who come in, start with a flavored. I kind of tend to graduate them up to, you know, non-flavored cigars. Yeah. When I know? first started, I was on like the acid oh, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is not bad. And then I graduated mm -hmm. to different cigars and stuff like that. And I was just like, it's not bad. I was like, you know, it's funny. When I, when I started smoking cigars, let's say 20 years ago, whatever, one of my best friends, he was all he did was buy Cubans. Mm. So I was into buying Cubans. And, you know, what I like a bigger ring gauge. Yeah. And what I noticed with Cubans is mm -hmm. it's very tough to find a Cuban with a bigger, a bigger ring yeah. gauge. I never realized that. And, you know, I started buying, you know, brands in the stores. And I got to tell you what, there's plenty of cigars that are not Cubans that really are great. In fact, my concern with the Cubans is who knows if they're real or not? Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. I mean, I can't yeah. tell if it's real. Yeah. Yeah. I okay? can. You can? I can. Yeah. 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 And, can. yeah. And, I always, and I always say this here's the flavor profile of all production cigars, right? From mild to full body Nicaraguan, right? Here's Cubans. This is the flavor profile of Cubans. That's it. From here to here. That's it. That's it. So if you like a mild to medium bodied cigar, then you're going to like Cubans. I like a strong Nicaraguan cigar. I don't, I like, I've had great Cubans, I've had terrible Cubans. I've had fake Cubans, I've had real Cubans, <laughs> but I like over here on the spectrum. You can, so just 
You can tell the, by the taste. You can tell or, by looking at it before you even say, smoke. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell yeah. to smell it. And Just look at it. And that's dry the, draw it. Dry draw it. And, tell. and, and, and that's the I'm thing, eating, too. Right. When I went to Costa Rica yeah. and all those um, um, different uh, countries out there, yeah. immediately I could tell if it's real because my man g- gave me a sample, mm-hmm. and I was like, I was like, whew. Yeah. And immediately you're like, whoa, this yeah, thing. Very distinct is, flavor. Yeah. No, it's immediate. Very you know flavor. what you know what's yeah. real because you were like, whoa. I and, said, uh, yeah. I'm high. I'm high, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, the nitrates in the soil. So first of all, you're gonna look at the wrapper. The wrapper should be completely smooth. It shouldn't have blemishes, right? Yes. And then when you smoke that, you're gonna taste those nitrates. It's gonna have an earthiness that a, a, a regular production cigar that's light, that's not from Cuba, is not gonna have. It's gonna have that earthiness. It's gonna taste like dirt and soil a little bit, and that's gonna be the undertone. Even if it does have those grassy, amity undertones of a regular light cigar. So you gotta be really careful, especially when you're in South America, yeah. especially when you're in the islands, you're probably not gonna get a real Cuban. Yeah. If you're in London, if you're in Paris, if you're in Switzerland, you're gonna get a real Cuban. Is there a way to tell, like if you go to an island, cause I go to Aruba a lot. Don't get a Cuban. On the box, <laughs> can you tell yep. whether the box is stamped the buy right way? Buy it in the hotel. Yeah. Don't buy it. Yeah, that's you what buy I do it in the hotel. Hotels. Yeah. The hotels definitely. Ninety nine percent of the time you'll be right because they don't care. Yep. They, they're gonna whack you for it anyway. Yeah. Right. yeah, As opposed to the guy on the beach who's gonna be like, "Hey, here's twenty cigars. Give me yeah, twenty dollars." Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know that ain't you right. Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when you know. When that price out immediately. That's yeah. Not when right. that price comes out, yeah. and a lot of times, so people, you'll know that it's a real cigar. They'll let you sample it. Yeah. And and when you sample it, you be like, Whew, "Whoa." Yeah, and I'm say, after you get halfway, you know that's a real cigar, and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah give me a box of that. I'll, I'll take. Yeah, a I'll, box that, that, that yeah. I'll take a box of that. And there's, combina- there's combinations of fakes, right? Yeah. You can have a fake cigar with a real band. Yes. Right. You can have a fake cigar in a real box. You can have a fake box with a real stamp. Yes. You know, there's all. Yeah. Which is that, that's the thing. It's so easy to reproduce these stamps now. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And then yeah. for the, the the sleeves on there, they would always say. Like oh, it got the, the the Cubans got to have that little Braille feeling to them, the yeah, Braille it's, it's or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a raised it's label. A raised yeah. label. Yep. And I was like, this one here, and I would tell guys like, nah, this is a smooth label. Yeah. I said, I know the bra- you know, I know that little mm-hmm. braised feeling on that. Mm-hmm. And I said, also, oh. I found with the Cubans that when you when the label moves, to me, when it's right. not tight it's, on it's the cigar, yeah. yeah. it's got to be tight. Yeah, got to be tight. It's not tight. But yep. if it's not. Thousand percent perfect, not a hundred percent. It's gonna be a thousand percent perfect. Cohiba is not gonna release a cigar unless that label is one thousand percent. Yeah. Every dot on there will line up. Yep. Every row of ink will line up. Yep. There's no smudge in a letter. Like it's perfect. It's gonna be perfect. It's perfect. If if you don't see that. Don't buy it. Don't buy yeah. it. <laughs> so Don't the, buy other, it. the other thing is, is that I, I like to read Cigar Aficionado. Mm. How accurate do you think those ratings are in the, in the magazine? Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. If you, you want to uh, go where I'll go. I, 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 I go for half an hour. I mean, listen, when's, <laughs> when's the last time you saw somebody not advertising in that magazine win a, get a good rating? I mean, yeah. so Cigar and Spirits magazine is good. Half Wheel is good for ratings. Yeah. Cigar uh, the, Journal. Cigar Journal. There's other places to go for ratings. And just... Listen, I've been smoking cigars in this, since 92. I'll tell you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Joe will tell you. Yeah. Um, to, uh, you know, we're both certified retail tobacconists. Yeah. Not a lot of guys are. Yeah. Um, we got certified. So, you know, we can tell you, hey, here's what you like based on what you smoke. And that's a better way to go. If you're looking for suggestions, Cigar Fishing great place to start. Yeah. Then smoke it, see if you like it. The best cigar is the one you like. Well, that's the whole thing. There you go. You right. Is that right? Yeah. You, got, you got to like it. I mean, yeah. That's the most important thing. I don't need to know the notes. I don't need to know you got chocolate or cocoa or no you like it or you don't like it yeah that's it right it's even yeah. like I, I know yeah. nick i've been in your shop with the with the house cigar yeah i mean it's unbelievable he's got a great it's house. a great yeah, smoke yeah, yeah. yeah great house. and you know some people think that you got to spend more money and you're going to get a better smoke not necessarily nope. Nope. it all depends on what your taste is yeah. yeah i mean we send our guy down to the dominican he goes to florida de los reyes their tobacco uh clearing house and he picks out the tobacco he wants and we ship it on back to newark and uh, we roll those cigars so do you find that with, with COVID now, hopefully coming out of COVID, are, is the flow of the cigars, is it easier to get them or is it still difficult? Oh, worse. Yeah. Worse. Yeah. It's worse. And with, now with the gas prices, I mean, I, I, you're going through the same thing as me. Yeah. You'd get a big box of cigars that used to cost 60 bucks a ship is now 140 bucks. Yeah. Wow. And that, that, that's got to go back into the cost of the cigar. I mean, when I sell a cigar, 
that that's a cost. Yeah, <laughs> everything's jumping up, and then yeah. and then reps aren't sending you nope uh, a list of just the regular stock list. They're sending you the list of what's in stock. Right. This is what this, you could have. This is this is what we've this got. Right. And it's never what you want. Nope. You know, so stuff so, they can't sell. <laughs> it's all the stuff that never moved before COVID. So what? But what is the main reason behind that, though? It's got to just be they they short armed the alligator armed it during COVID didn't step up production during COVID because they were worried about it dropping off and now they have to catch back up. Now, if you're smoking a 12 year age cigar, that's tobacco they had to be aging for 12 years. So, you know, if there's any disruption in that chain, you disrupt the whole thing. And they had the same social distancing thing we had here. So this is a much bigger scale, but I'll, I'll break it down real easy. Say you had 12 guys rolling cigars in this room. Now it's social distancing, now you get six. Yep. All right, so now you, you cut it in half. So it used to be three shifts of 12. Now it's three shifts of six. Yeah. Now in Nicaragua and in the Dominican Republic, they have a curfew of five o'clock. So now there's no more three shifts of that six. Now it's a shift and a half. Yeah. Because these guys have to leave at like 3.30 because they gotta be back in their house by five and nobody lives within an hour of the, yeah. of the plant where they're rolling. So and they don't now, have cars. Yeah, right, no car. And they, I was talking, I was just at the, uh, the uh, TPE convention two months ago in Vegas. And I was talking to a bunch of these guys. They're like, we have more tobacco than we've ever had in our lives. We just can't roll it and produce just it. can't produce it. Can't roll it. Yeah, right. can't roll it. Right. Can't roll it. I mean, they have it. Right. It's all premium stuff. It's all good stuff. Right. It's ready right. to go. I mean, 150 <laughs> people touch your cigar before you, before oh, you yeah, smoke yeah, it, right? right. Yeah. So there's right. ladies sorting tobacco. There's yeah. people putting in big polonies. They're there's checking drying it for room. seeds and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's rooms full of people doing six different mm -hmm. things with this tobacco, and now you're deleting one person in between every right. person. Uh, guys, look, this has been great information. It's it's really great to uh, sit with two people that really know what they're talking about. Uh, it, no, it's really very insightful. Nick uh, and Mike? <laughs> and, and, and Mike, it was a pleasure to have you. Hey, um, hey, I'm, I'm glad you joined. You, um, so, again, we're at Joe Cigars in Spring Lake. David, I'd like to thank you for coming down to Joe Cigars. My pleasure. It is really great to have you here. I right, Listen, any of you guys want to uh, do something great and have fun in your cigar shop, this is the way to go. It brings the community together. We have a lot of fun, and this is a great event. Thank you again. Pleasure. Thank you. This is uh, the first uh, return of Shades of Havana since COVID. I uh, hope it's the first of many to come. We have uh, many other um, uh, planned for the summer in different locations. So please tune in. And what I want to know is, what are you smoking? Shades of Havana with your host, David Zimmel, and special guest host, Nick Foster, along with our guests, Mike Al and Joe Scafidi, directed by Rod Weber, created by Michael R. Doyle, producers, David Zimmel and Erwin Sternberg, executive producers, Michael R. Doyle and Sean M. Sternberg, co-producers, Steve Zimke and John P. Doyle, camera and sound, Rod Weber and Mark Ryu, editor, Steve Zimke, and special thanks to Joe Scafidi for hosting us at Joe Cigars and Social Club in Spring Lake, New Jersey. Shades of Havana was brought to you by Senior Juan Cigars. Visit SeniorJuanCigars.com for subscriptions and suggestions for your next great cigar. Sir Real, Sir-Real.com for all your streaming service solutions. Or call 646-498-8888. Again, 646-498-8888. Our sponsors' websites and phone numbers are also provided in the show notes. When you visit our sponsors, you're helping them and helping our show. And if you enjoy Shades of Havana, we hope you tell your friends and give us a great rating wherever you get your podcasts. All opinions expressed by the Shades of Havana participants are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Shades of Havana, Inc., a subsidiary of MRD Productions, LLC. Shades of Havana is an MRD production.